game ever. November 6th, 2008. Whoa! TCU versus Utah. Two nationally ranked teams. This is definitely the game that changed my life. Missed. Here he goes on the slam. Touchdown, Utah. One of the most memorable games I have ever attended. This present is shaking. Big time highlight of 2008 season. Greatest home game in Rice Echo Stadium history. With that game being played in November, both teams knew where they were in terms of the BCS. Well, they were both nationally ranked. Utah felt that this game was the game that they could turn the corner on and look to the future as an undefeated team. TCU had a loss to Oklahoma early, but they won every game since then. They were perfect in conference play. We knew that it was going to be the game that would either put us into that BCS running or would put them into it. The newspaper men say this is the biggest game ever. Is that accurate? For us fans, it didn't need to be hyped. We knew they're ranked, we're ranked. We're up against each other. Mountain West, Mountain West, here we go. You know, I remember just thinking that this is a once in a life, or lifetime opportunity to make a statement um, for Utah football and, uh, and, and make sure that we finish the season out the right way. This game's all about opportunity tonight. First to solidify a bowl bid in the BCS games and also to show this country how, just how good these teams are. Besides the fact that you had two teams that were BCS contenders, uh, Utah was having its first blackout game. The black jersey idea came from the players. And Utah have been so strict over the years, we're wearing red. There was a few guys who had always been pushing to wear black jerseys and, and kind of change it up. I remember our seniors having a meeting with, uh, with Dr. Hill before the season had started about uh, potentially wanting the, the opportunity to wear black uniforms, and he, he let us do it. I mean, it was, like, it was like Christmas for us. You had kids, and you know what I'm saying, ripping open their jerseys and trying to try them on and taking pictures. You come into the stadium and you're used to vibrant red all around, 360 degrees of red. Well, you are seeing nothing but black. Everyone is wearing black. Once you went out to the stadium and it was full before kickoff and you see the entire stadium was lined in black, it was something that was uh, really unique. It sent a shiver up my spine going, oh my gosh, if I'm feeling like this, what is TCU going to feel like when they come out? In the pregame, a good friend of mine now, was a, he was a starting middle linebacker for TCU, Robert Henson. He came out and he was like, no, I appreciate y'all wearing the black jerseys for us today. It's going to be a good one. TCU will kick off. Drew Combs will handle the honors for the Horned Frogs. And we're underway from Salt Lake City. From the five. Straight ahead return out to the 26 yard line for David Reed. And that's where Utah will set up shop led by senior quarterback Brian Johnson, the winningest quarterback in the history at the University of Utah with 22 victories under his belt. And his offensive line will be tested tonight as we take a look at the starters up front for the Utes, specifically Dustin Hensel, who is their right tackle. Hensel will be opposite Jerry Hughes for most of the night. Yeah, he's an academic All-American. He's better gone to school because Hughes puts a lot of pressure immediately. The advantage Hensel has is his size, 6'7", 307. We'll see a couple different running backs today for Utah. They start on the ground, and they start with a seven-yard gain on first down. Stephen Hodge up to make the stop for TCU. Let's meet the starters on the defensive side of the ball for the Horned Frogs. We told you about Jerry Hughes, pretty good book in at the other side with Matt Panfield. It's a 4-2-5 defense. The two linebackers are very talented, Robert Henson and Jason Phillips, and great cornerbacks. Nick Sanders and Raphael Priest are both juniors. They're both three-year starters. Second and four now for the Utes. Johnson has time all over the middle and the catch made for a first down. Freddie Brown hauls it in. Big play converting on that uh, second down and five. Two good plays for the Utes. A solid misdirection run on first down and then a fine catch over the middle by Freddie Brown. Brown had a great game against New Mexico, a game where the Utah offense struggled to put points on the board, even though they moved the chains early and often. Five wide. Underneath route. 
And a gain of four on first down. That time it's Braden Godfrey. Now Godfrey's going to be an important part of this pass offense because of plays just like that, working over the middle. Pass protection's pretty good. Johnson steps up. It's a short gain, but it's a gain nonetheless. And that's the most important thing against a defense that is so good at turning the ball over. We'll see if that TCU defense can get pressure on Brian Johnson. None just yet. They lead the nation in sacking the quarterback with 38. On the ground this time, on the end around. Nowhere to go for Castillo. Maybe picks up a yard. A lot of different weapons on offense for Utah. A lot of different weapons on defense for TCU. And that's the challenge tonight for, for Utah and any team that plays TCU is the overall team speed of the Horned Frogs. You're not going to make a lot of yardage going wide against this team. They're just too fast. They get off blocks too easily and they chase down runners. Castillo's got great speed, but he got very little out of that play. Third and five now, empty set for Brian Johnson, the senior out of Baytown, Texas. They bring Jarrell Mack back to the backfield. Almost intercepted off the hands of Robert Henson. He had one pick last week and another one that was waved off after a penalty. Uh, he's frustrated because this ball hit him right in the midst. Here he is, number 51, as he drops back into coverage. That's Godfrey that uh, Johnson's looking for. Well, also, Henson was looking for him. Ball thrown poorly. If that ball is thrown better, maybe Henson makes the catch. He Five. was all over Godfrey time. Five plays and done on that drive, and they bring in King Louis, Louis Sakota, one of the best in the business, will punt and handle the place kicking duties for Utah. He is nearly perfect with his placement. Fair catch asked for. Taken at the 15 yard line. A redshirt sophomore out of Katy, Texas, has been on fire his last three games. Nine touchdowns, no picks. And he has grown up in a big way in this TCU offense. Across the line, Preston Phillips will get his ninth, uh, probably seventh start of the season. He takes the place of Kyle Dooley at left guard. And we'll see a few different running backs today. We've already seen Justin Watson pull back Aaron Brown and Ryan Christensen. will also see action for the Horn Frogs. Dalton misfired on first down. Here it is, second and ten. And they keep it on the ground on the end of the round, but with Aaron Brown, and he takes it out to the 22-yard line. Smith with the stop for Utah. Defensively, here's how Utah lines up. Fantastic ends in Koa Misi and Paul Kruger. Linebackers are Sylvester, Sylvester Wright and Fotu. And we've already seen the physical play of cornerback Sean Smith. He stands 6'3", 214, former wide receiver. And Smith will shadow Jimmy Young most of the evening, especially when he's to the short side of the field. Third and four. Johnson went in motion. Dalton to throw that way. Good hands. First down and more. And all the way out. Still down the sideline and alive. And takes it inside the 30-yard line. Bart Johnson, the sophomore from Brownwood, just kept running. Longest catch of his career. Got a little help from his wide receiver on the play. 44 yards all told. But watch from, from the right side of the field. He's going to get a little bit of a rub there on the defensive back. That's Terrell Cole. And then just an un unexcusable mistake by McKay, not either pushing him out of bounds or tackling him. Here's the rub right there. That should have been called offensive pass interference. You just get away with one. Walter Bryant ran the pick. First chunk play of the night belongs to TCU. Out of the two back set. Here's Brown towards the left side. And Brown bounces it outside. He's down to the 16 yard line. And likely a first down for TCU. Boy, that speed is a big difference in this game so far right now. They're basically running the same type of plays. Just a simple handoff to Brown. But with his speed, he bounces to the outside, makes a couple miss, and puts the ball all the way down to the 16-yard line. Similar type of offenses. Both like to run the spread. Both want to have the quarterback and the shotgun. TCU will use two tight ends more than the Utes will, though. TCU second best in the conference and scoring inside the red zone. They were fantastic in the red zone against UNLV last week. 
Six for six with five touchdowns. Brown. Found by Nye Fotu, sophomore from Hawaii. Now, great timing by Fotu to get in there for this, for this uh, run blitz type of sack. Coming from the outside here, watch as he jumps inside the tight end and uses his speed to bring Brown down. Big play for the youth defense. Dan Aaron Brown is a great cutback runner. Not sure if that'll be there today against these two great defensive ends. And the active linebackers like Nye Fotu. Brown motions out. Dalton wants to run the option. Everybody was moving early. A first flag of the day. Yeah, Shea Reagan, the uh, tight end to the near side of the field, moved early. That's something that uh, Dead ball. just does often. Offense, number 86. Five yard penalty. That will still be two. Rich Cole in the official tonight. Our white hat, and that's Shea Reagan. A lot of penalties against the, the uh, Frogs this year. As you can see, this is not where you want to be ranked in the top two in the country, but they're an aggressive team, and that's what uh, sometimes happens. Brown's off to a great start. Three carries, 17 yards, right about his average. They'll respot the ball just inside the 20. Red zone defense for Utah has allowed 14 touchdowns and four field goals on the season. Dalton to throw again. Looks deep down the sideline, almost intercepted. It was Sean Smith that time. And sometimes folks forget he's 6'3", tough to get it over the top. Yeah, and that was a poor decision, something that uh, Dalton had not been doing. This is not a receiver who's open by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, this ball is a dropped interception. As Jimmy Young struggling to get off the line of scrimmage, you just can't cover a receiver better than that. In fact, Young never even got up to make a play on the ball. TCU head coach Gary Patterson took drastic measures to curb Dalton's interceptions last season. Said as soon as you pull a pick, we'll pull you. And that was the case towards the tail end of the year. And that was a good decision, throwing that screen pass away. There were more youths in that screen than there were frogs. So that's where the drive will stall for TCU. TCU was loaded in 2008. First of all, they had Andy Dalton. Andy Dalton, one of the great quarterbacks in the nation, not just one of the great quarterbacks at TCU. And Andy had great receivers, but one of the real secret weapons was in Ross Evans. Ross Evans, 13 of 15 on the season. He's the only freshman semifinalist for the Lou Groza Award. And he fits it in to put TCU in front. Square toes, Square what it's toe. called, buddy. Yeah, yeah. that's, that's old school. Yo, old school. Look, it's not even white. He's got a black square toe kicking shoe. Uh, he can get it down there, can he? He's the first straight on kicker at TCU since the mid 80s. John Denton is now the radio analyst. I don't think he wears square toes anymore. From the two. They fake the reverse for a second time. David Reed straight up the middle out to the 30 yard line and a 28 yard return for Reed. Went off to the SEC. Matt Asiata is in the game for Utah. Johnson to throw. Pressure and tripped up. Thought he could get away, but just by a shoelace, he's dropped by Jason Phillips. Asiata carries some guys with him up to the 29 yard line. The numbers that uh, this defense has put up is just fa fantastic. I mean, three and a half, three point eight sacks per game. That's 38 on the season. So you see the play by the middle linebacker Phillips on the play previous. He's their number one tackler coming in with 60. But they all have great speed. They all are very athletic. They don't stay on the ground long. They get after the ball carrier. And the numbers just continue to pile up. Veteran coach Dick Bumpus is the defensive coordinator at, D at TCU. Works hand in hand with Gary Patterson on this 4-2-5 defense. Third and 11 now for Utah. Utah 0 for 1 in third down conversions thus far. They only bring four, and Johnson gets it away but drop. When you think about TCU football, the first thing that comes to your mind is defense, and uh, they've always been a great defensive team. They were loaded. I mean, it wasn't just one guy. It was 
their 11 guys on the field defensively, they were one of the top five defenses in the country that whole year. You know, both teams, I think, were in the top 10 in total defense in the country at the time. So we knew, uh, you know, it was going to be tough sledding trying to move the ball against them. Louis Sakota, senior from San Jose, California, to punt it away. And Nick Sanders is back to return. TCU has had some return issues the last couple of games. TCU came after that one, nearly got it. This one will hop to the 30 and be down at the 28 yard line. A 42 yard punt from Louis Sakota. Just a half yard off of his average. Brown motions out of the backfield. That leaves Ryan Christian and Dalton will take it himself. And Dalton dives up towards the 40 yard line. Gain of 11 on first down for a quarterback that runs very well. And this is the beauty of this offense. He's reading the defensive end. The defensive end crashes down. He pulls the ball back, takes off up the middle, and dives and picks up a first down. Right now, the Frog offense is dominating the Ute defense, doing just about everything they can. They've only had one negative play so far, and that was the offset sides against Reagan. Moved into the red zone on their first drive, scored on their first drive. Brown changes direction. Here he goes. Aaron Brown past midfield. Aaron Brown finally forced out of bounds inside the 20. The second big play for the TCU offense tonight. That one goes for 41. Made a great move on the free safety, Robert Johnson. Johnson crashing the line of scrimmage. Number 17, here he is right here. Watch this move that Brown puts on him as he goes right by, accelerates, and then down the sidelines. Super job of running him down for the Utes and by Terrell Cole, but that was a big play by Brown. And quickly back to action, Ryan Christian up to hash mark, takes it to the 16-yard line. Big plays have been uh, on the side of the Frogs so far tonight. The 52-yard reception by Brad Johnson, Bart Johnson rather, and then Brown is off to a fabulous start. All under the direction of Andy Dalton. 70 yards on the ground now for TCU. A great rushing offense, even though they don't have any one superstar. That was Bart Johnson in motion. Dalton looks that direction. They set up that screen again, that pick, and it's incomplete off the numbers of Walter Bryant. Well, that time, Bart Johnson was the guy doing the picking, and he blocked the corner, but he blocked him before the ball was in the air, so it was a legal play. Watch number six come over here. Trying to get the ball outside to uh, Walter Bryant. Again, a drop pass there. Third and six now for TCU. On the season, the sixth best in the country at 52%. Tonight, they're one for two. Dalton over the middle. First down and more. Jimmy Young. Inside the five, they'll mark it near the two. Great job by Jimmy Young, continuing on his route across the middle. You see him flash there. Again, traffic over the middle. Traffic that caused Sean Smith to drop his coverage on number 88. And 88 takes it down to the three-yard line. He leaves the game for the time being. First and goal now for TCU. Evan Frost, the tight end, is in on the left side. They go too tight this time. Quick snap. And no signal yet. Touchdown, TCU. Ryan Christian scores his fourth of the season. When TCU came out and kind of punched Utah in the mouth to start the game, uh, everybody wearing black, uh, all the writers were thinking of our good funeral leads, wearing black to a funeral, and, uh, you know, it got ugly early. TCU came out with a very high pace and, and uh, fast offense, and, you know, our communication was a little off to begin with. They got a, a field goal and a touchdown really quick. They're up 10-0. You thought, okay, their offense came to play. Can Utah hang in there and adjust? Throughout the course of the season, our defense just built such a strong bond and unity that we just felt like nobody could really touch us. TCU was the first time when a team had driven down the whole field, and I remember feeling like, wow, a team just did that to us. Once we were able to settle in and, and uh and uh, get the jitters, I, I guess you could say, uh, out of our system. Uh, we play great defense the rest of the way. Ross Evans on to attempt the extra point. The play is away. The touchdown will stand, and TCU now with a 10 0 lead.
Reed from the five. Through the wedge to the 25 before he dives forward out to the 29 yard line. Solid return for Utah. Darrell Mack flanks Brian Johnson working out of the shotgun. Johnson has it in his hands. Out to the 33. 32. Matt Panfill. Senior from right there in Fort Worth at a North Crowley High School had to stop. You know, Tom, they, they tackled the guy that they faked the ball to, and they tackled Johnson as well. They're everywhere. <laughs> Mack gets a breather. And it brings Colt Sampson, the tight end, into the backfield. Plenty of motion for Utah. This one all Asiata, who is in there. On the direct snap. Matt Asiata saw his season end before it really began last year. Broken leg in the opener against Oregon State. Now, this is the Asiata formation. A lot of teams call it the wild cat or the wild hog. TCU has it. They call it the wild frog. But uh, that time it was a fine play by Daryl Washington who made that tackle. Third and six now for the Utes. Johnson in the air. First down. Out to the 45 yard line. And that was Freddie Brown with his second grab of the night. Henson had the tackle. And the crowd cheers the first third down conversion and three tries for the Utes tonight. But uh, Brown's got the big body, 6'4", 215. And the good thing about that play was the throw right to the chest of Brown where he didn't have to reach for it. All he had to do was make the catch. He had the first down with the catch. It's pretty simple. We asked Brian Johnson what he likes about Freddie Brown. No drops this season. <laughs> That'll do. Johnson again to the air. Was the foot down? They say yes. And Brent Castile has a first down. T.J. Johnson on the cover. Well, this one will be worth looking at. Castile appeared to get his left foot down before his right foot hit out of bounds. Check it out. Left foot down, but was that heel on the line? Everybody wearing black on the sideline said, no, this is a good catch. And indeed it was. And so Castillo gets a break. Tremendous body control for the first down and the Utes marching here in their third possession. On the ground, this is Wise to the 32 yard line. First carry tonight for Eddie Wide, pardon me, the sophomore from Vegas. I mean, the biggest difference between these two teams is in their running backs. So Mac, Asiata, and Wide are really your power runners. They don't have the breakaway speed or the great moves. They move the ball. But as we've seen with Aaron Brown, he's got that breakaway speed. He's already shown it tonight. Second and five for Utah. Up the middle, nothing doing. Robert Henson filled that hole quickly. Well, Henson fills a lot of holes. Second leading tackler behind middle linebacker Jason Phillips, 51 there. That's his 58th tackle of the season. Boy, he read that so quickly. It's a draw play, and coming as fast as the running back was Henson for no gain. Henson had two and a half tackles for a loss last week against UNLV. A couple weeks ago against Wyoming, he knocked out the starting and the backup quarterback. That's not nice. Third down. Johnson pressure. Incomplete. Took a shot. We had some opportunities that we didn't quite take advantage of in the first half. Um, you know, due to our lack of execution and to um, what, what they were doing on defense. So it was just a battle, and we knew that uh, we had to make the most of our opportunities. You don't want to get tight and, and press. Just reemphasize to them that, hey, the same things are the things that have gotten you to this point. You know, the way you've been playing, the way you've been executing, this game's no different. Just continue doing the same things you've been doing all season long. Louis Sakota has a season-long 53-yarder to his name. This will be a 49-yard attempt. Louis Sakota, incredible. 
I don't know how many times he pulled it out and did that kick, did that whatever at the end of games, mid games, bad weather, good weather, didn't matter. He was solid all the time. If anyone can do it, he can. They call him King Louis for a reason. And Utah is on the board. Not very often that your kicker is the big man on campus, but that's the case here in Salt Lake City. And that was a huge three points for the Utes to get on the scoreboard and to stay close to the guys in purple. Ten yards a play against a pretty good Utah defense. Two tight ends here. Play action. Dalton off his back foot incomplete. Dalton looks back the other way. They try to set up the screen. Joe Dale is there to stop it. Curtis Clay had the grab for the Horn Frogs. Big defensive series for the Utes. No question about that. Cannot allow a touchdown here by TCU. Ross Evans has already kicked one field goal. Boy, they've been good on third down conversions, haven't they, Tom? Four out of five so far. Utah's defense have been so solid all year. They just had not given up big plays. So you thought, okay, what's going on here? Is this going to be a boat race for Utah? Not only, not only loses tonight, but loses big. Dalton to throw again on third. Pressure coming. They throw him down. And that is out of field goal range. Well, that's the key thing there. That is a huge loss. Dalton taking the sack. Did not see the blitz coming. Utah lined up with a three-man rush and then brought the safeties. 14 yards on this sack. Well, they gathered themselves and they, they they figured some things out and it really settled down into what we thought it was going to be, which was a low scoring defensive game. Utah had stopped the momentum of TCU because all 10 points have been scored in the first quarter. And so Anson Kelton will punt it away and they want Castile back deep to get his great abilities with the ball in his hands. High kick from Kelton. Castile waves him off. That'll be down inside the 10 at the nine yard line. Things sort of settled down as they got toward the half. The problem was, is Utah was having trouble putting points on the board. Matt Aziata is the running back for Utah. They show blitz. This ball belongs to Brian Johnson, and Johnson takes a look at the 14 yard line by Stephen Hodge. Fourth drive of the game for the Utes. First possession, first two ended in punts. And then a Luis Sakota field goal got him on the board after an eight play 40 yard drive. And don't forget, there's a lot on the line tonight. Both teams undefeated in Mountain West Conference play, but bigger fish to fry as they each eye a berth in a BCS Bowl. Johnson to throw on second and six. And a run. Got a shaken man, and he's brought down. And that will leave third down again. Darrell Washington, the junior from Irving, found him. Not a bad backup linebacker. He backs up Robert Henson and makes a lot of tackles. He's called his name a couple of times already in this first half. But when you're out there one on one with an athlete like Brian Johnson, that's a heck of a play by Washington. So third and three for Utah, which is converted just once in four attempts on third down. Johnson over the middle. First down. Braden Godfrey. Henson had the stop. You know, next time they're faced with a third and three like that, and if TCU rushes the passer with four men, look at the hole in the middle of this defense for Johnson to run. He could have picked it up easily. Also had a uh, receiver who was open. Again, it's Godfrey working over the middle, but don't be surprised if the Utes don't come back with a quarterback draw the next third and short. Castile in the slot will go in motion. Here's the option. Wide. 
stayed on his feet long enough to get tackled by Jason Phillips, only a couple of yards at time for Eddie Wide. Well, the frogs just react so quickly. I know that sounds weird that you ever seen a frog react, but <laughs> that time Nick Sanders, as soon as that uh, pitch was made, it looked like there was a lot of running room. But Sanders came up quickly and uh, made the tackle there. Second and eight. Here's the backup quarterback, Corbin Louch. He's got wheels, but he fumbles the football. Louch got it back. Yep, he did. Looked like it was ripped away as he was just about picking his way through the middle of the TCU defense. First carry of the game for Louch. Let's see who knocks it away. Yeah, right hand there. That's again Daryl Washington. Or was that Robert Henson? 51, not 41. Yeah. Big right hand ripped that ball loose. Third and seven coming up. We'll see more of Corbin Louch later in the game. Fantastic talent for Utah. Or we may not. <laughs> True. Play clock at two and they get it off. Johnson wants to go deep. Man coverage on the outside. Incomplete the coverage by Raphael Priest. He was looking for David Reed. Out of bumping and grinding on that fly pattern by David Reed. Good coverage there as well. Watch the uh, contact here right there. That could have been called on Priest as he certainly impeded the progress of Reed. That ball wasn't all that far overthrown, but again, a, a break goes purple way. Priest caging up to get away with it. His 37th straight start tonight. Nick Sanders back to return. Dakota got it up just in front of a pair of frogs and Sanders takes a fair catch. Derek Shelby a blow at that nose tackle spot there but he fights off the the block right up front by the center Blake Schluter. And this is where Utah's got to make a statement in this ball game. Both teams start to be settling down on defense offensively. Both teams struggling. Loud crowd breathing down Andy Dalton's back. Dalton pressure throws it away. Utah fans calling for a safety on a uh, intentional grounding, but uh, he threw the ball. Past the line of scrimmage, he was out of the tackle box, heads up play, and what strength he shows pulling away right here from Kruger to get that ball out of bounds and incomplete. Offensive coordinator Mike Schultz told his team, we're going to have our heels on our goal line once or twice, but they thought that the play at Oklahoma in front of a big-time crowd would benefit them here tonight. Dalton uses the timeout. Can't afford a mistake here. And the play clock was running out on him. Dalton uncorks one down the sideline. Knocked away, incomplete. It was one on one. Number one, Walter Bryan against number one, Bryce McCain. And it was McCain with the stop and Kruger with the pressure. How about the defense that uh, Gary Anderson called on this play? Two man rush, nine dropping. And fine coverage outside by McCain. McCain had a tough, tough day on Tuesday, but not tonight. Anson Kelton. As close to the stands as he is the goal line. Good looking spiral. Castile from the 43. Takes it straight up the middle. Submarine at the 45-yard line. Brian Johnson, 7 of 11 tonight for 62 yards. Directing the spread attack for Utah. Aziata is his running back. Plenty of time. Plenty of arm. Incomplete. Covers by Priest. Looking for David Reed. You're not going to cover a wide receiver any better than Raphael Priest is, does on this play. He's done it a couple times already tonight. He was not fooled at all. 
that is great coverage because he's looking for the ball while the contact is made and the contact is initiated by Reed. Brian Johnson on the sideline now as they mix it up and it's Asiata taking the direct snap. Asiata straight up the middle. Gary Patterson said we're just going to load him up, dare him to pass. Utah's having trouble blocking the linebackers and the safeties. The backs are getting through the line of scrimmage, that initial line of defense, but uh, it's the linebackers. Check out Jason Phillips, 39, as he fights off a block and gets in on the tackle with a couple of other linebackers, Henson among others. Utah's two of seven on third down tonight. One concern with running that formation is that you break the routine that your quarterback is in. See if Johnson can come off the sideline and make a play here on third down. Try to make a play with his legs. Makes a man miss. He'll be short of the first down, and he took a shot from Robert Henson. Henson now, helps him up. And, Tom, now the question is, do you go for it, or do you bring out Zakota for a long field goal? It looks like uh, the decision is made by Kyle Whittingham, bringing out tight ends. That looks like uh, Colt Sampson, among others. It would be about a 53-yard attempt. There's absolutely no wind tonight, so that's not a factor. Dakota's long this season is 53. And the Utes have been good on fourth down this season. Eight of 11 they've converted. Johnson keeps it. Doesn't get it. Big stop by Jason Phillips. Let's check out the leading tackler for TCU as Whittingham can't believe this play. Watch the middle linebacker. A lot of misdirection. He's not fooled at all by the fake here to Asiata. And he finds a way of bringing down the quarterback about a yard short of the first down. Big play by Jason Phillips. If there's a scar on his nose, you can blame the media relations department. When he was posing for pictures for the media guide earlier this season, the photographer said, look mean. He said, that's great, but we'd like some blood. He said, I can do that. Went to the training room, came back with a cut on his nose. And he was a former quarterback in high school. Meanest looking quarterback in the build, second meanest looking quarterback in the building tonight. Eliapo with the stop that time. He sniffed out Ryan Christian. So a minute 50 to go and counting. Andy Dalton through the air thus far tonight. Just 5 of 15, but a lot of the negative plays have been TCU mistakes. Yeah, the offsides and the delay a game. They've got two timeouts, but it uh, looks like they're in no hurry to use them or to move the ball down the field on second and ten. I don't know if I'd be in a hurry as well. I, I think a seven-point lead at the half looks pretty good. Dalton. Knocked away. Coverage that time by Joe Dale. He was trying to find Aaron Brown out of the backfield. Greg Newman made Dalton throw off his back foot. Yeah, and that ball was uh, just hung in the air too long. You throw that corner out, you want to lead the receiver low and to the outside. That ball hung up there for Dale to come over and make a fine play. Watch the pressure. That may be the reason the ball hung in the air. You can see Brown had to almost stop. Dalton, just one of his last six passes. They converted four of their eight third down attempts. Dalton on the draw with the lead blocker out there. Dalton finds the midfield stripe. That's good for a first down. Stevenson Sylvester filing brought him down. Great block by Justin Watts in the secondary. You don't see that very often. He just got in the way of one of the tacklers. And at the end of the play, check out number 32. He goes out of the picture, but he's leading Dalton down the field. There's his block. That got the first down and five extra yards. Under a minute to go in the first half from Salt Lake City. Dalton pressured again, goes down again. Misi met up with Newman, and they both bring him down. Brown joins him in the backfield, second and 17. Dalton had to pump. 
pull it in. Now Brown out of bounds. Stop the clock with 40 seconds left and third and long coming up. Utah with those timeouts and the clock stop will have an opportunity likely to get the ball back and make something happen. We just had a really explosive defense. We had guys at every position that could make plays. And, uh, you know, I, don't, I can't remember a game where we didn't really control the game. Dalton ran for a first down on their last third and long. Three man line for the Utes. I remember rushing the passer and he got rid of it pretty quick, but it was kind of a high flying, you know, like a fade type pass. Pressure on Dalton, smoked as he threw, intercepted. I saw Sean running towards the receiver, came up, jumped and got it, and uh, started running, and, and I was just doing my best to get a good block. And Smith down the sideline, has blockers in front. You can kind of hear it when the ball's in there, because everybody gets real quiet, and then you just know, okay, the ball's coming your way. His eyes get real big, and all you hear is you guys' feet running, and I just remember turning around and going up for it, and you know, seeing my teammates get a couple good blocks, and then I'm running for a little bit. Sean Smith across midfield, and finally wrestled to the ground by Walter Bryant. Sean Smith transferred from offense, played offense through his entire career, changed to a corner, became one of the great corners, got drafted in the NFL because of it, and one of his biggest interceptions was off Andy Dalton to stop their drive and to give Utah a chance to get Luis Sakota's foot into the ballgame. He had an interception return for a touchdown earlier, and that's what he was thinking about after he picked off Andy Dalton this time. Fourth pick of the year for the 6-3 cornerback. It's a, a huge turning point in that game. We were able to uh, kind of drive it down, get a couple quick passes in. Brian Johnson takes a moment to chat with his coaches on the sideline and his counterpart, Andy Dalton. Bit of a limp to him as he works the sideline. First pick in the last 109 attempts for Andy Dalton. And five interceptions against Utah in the last two games. It's been relatively a mistake free night for Brian Johnson, the senior leader for Utah, was noted by each and every person we talked to within the program this week as the reason this team is undefeated. He backed up Alex Smith on that Fiesta Bowl team and actually got a few snaps in that game against Pittsburgh and his fifth year in the program. Utah's got a couple of timeouts remaining. Over the middle, Godfrey makes his man miss. His knee was down. That'll be just short of the first down, which... Only one other uh, college football game going on. Now, Sakota is in range. Right now, if, T if uh, Utah doesn't gain another yard. Five wide for Utah. Johnson. Ball bobbled but hauled in for a first down and down to the 20. Seven ticks left. Godfrey. Do they have time for another play before bringing Sakota out? I don't think so. I, I think with this type of offense, it's a very slow developing passing game, but right now they're going to save the timeout and spike the ball. The chance to discuss it with the timeout remaining for Utah. Clock ran on that play down to four seconds. 4.6 is what it reads on the scoreboard clock. That was the slowest spike of all time because that was a first down. And here comes Sakota. Watch the clock. Well, that's a mistake. And this is a home team clock operator. Louis Sakota came to campus as a walk-on. Here in that scholarship, he said earlier this year, it's every day it's fun to wake up. When you're this good, it certainly is. Another to account for all six points for Utah here in the first half. 
After being down 10 0 to get that field goal before the half, that was a momentum changer huge for the Utes. Well, as, a, as a broadcaster, I'm always optimistic, and particularly when the score is 10 to 6 at halftime. That's only a four point spread. And uh, Utah had not really got untracked as yet. You know, the thought for Utah fans, uh, probably at the half was, are these guys going to score any points tonight? Because, uh, you know, a couple field goals isn't going to get it done. 10 6, not even a problem. We can get this done. TCU owns the only touchdown tonight, a Ryan Christian one yard plunge. <laughs> Good. Utah's going to have a hard time getting points. It felt like the defense settled down from that rough first quarter. They were playing well. For us, you know, we knew we had to had an opportunity to win this game, and uh, it was an electric atmosphere, and uh, we wanted to make sure um, that we came out and executed at a high level in the second half. They bring Aaron Brown to the backfield. Brown has the ball. Past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Bryce McCain came in. He had the pick in the first half. A three-year starter for this Utah defense. Yeah, I'm surprised we haven't seen more of Brown. In the first half, he was dynamite. Carried the ball four times for 58 yards. That was just his fifth carry of the evening. On the option, Dalton keeps, cuts to the 30 for a first down. Koa Misi tripped him up. Really good decision on the option play by Dalton and then good strength to pull away from this tackle and get enough for the first down. He comes down the line of scrimmage after the fake on the end around but there's the hole and good blocking out in front gives Shea Reagan a lot of credit for keeping the safety away from his quarterback. Shea Reagan has a name called in all the wrong ways tonight a couple of false starts and another flag. Well they're trying to beat Utah to the punch here by going on a quick count and they're just catching them their own team off sides ball ball. starting ball start offense number 70 five yard penalty down still one and big Marshall Newhouse he can't hide when he jumps off sides 6'3 317 pounds not the number that they wanted to hit today out of the eye formation this time Brown bottled up, tried to bounce, finds some yardage, some hit yardage, and takes it out to, to the 31 yard line. Kepa Geisen had to stop. All great running backs have vision. You know, they have to have all that good moves and speed and strength and everything, but if they don't see it, they're not going to get it. That was a great job of Brown being patient, waiting for that hole to open, and then picking up some good yardage. Rare eye formation look for TCU. Play, second and nine. Dalton pulls it back. Down the sideline for Christian. Cuts it inside and stays on his feet to the 35 and finally dances out of bounds. McCain brought him out, but it's another big gain for Ryan Christian. Well, in the first half, he caught one similar to that play for 24 yards. This one goes for 33. Play fake there and then wide open on the wheel route again out of the backfield, making uh, Bryce McCain miss and picking up extra yardage. McCain finally caught up to him to take him out of bounds. They're starting the second half time as they started the game. Big plays. 143 yards through the air for Dalton. Empty backfield. Here comes the blitz. Fires one complete to Christian again. In a four and a half. Stevenson Sylvester, the linebacker, had to stop. Boy, that offensive line just they saw that blitz coming too. Dom, watch the time in the throwing lane. That's just perfect. The blitz came from Dalton's left side, and he was thrown to the right side and had a lane to throw to and a wide open receiver. Paul Kruger, six and a half sacks on the season for Utah. Koamisi at the other side has a few sacks to his name. Brown up the middle. Into Sylvester. A couple of yards on a few yards on second and five only third and three now for TCU and that's really a perfect down for this style of offense a lot of options Mike Schultz calling the plays for the 
Frogs offensive coordinator met with last night. He's excited about their season that they've had. He feels they've got a recipe. They know how to win these games. They know and have great confidence in their offensive plan. Dalton directing traffic since Bryant to the left side of the formation. And a whistle again, and two men move. Timeout. Nope, timeout. Pardon me. See you. First charge timeout of the second half. Watson Brown are the running backs. There goes Aaron Brown. Comes back. Brown trying to stretch it. Tries to cut, and he powers his way to a first down. Terrell Cole had the stop, but Brown shoved his way for an extra two yards. 6'1", 196 pounds, great leg drive here. 23 coming. He's got the uh, Justin Watts out in front, but this is effort right here. He was stopped two yards shy of the first down marker and ended up a yard beyond it. Great effort by Aaron Brown. Carried Robert Johnson with him. Brown on the sideline now. Looked like a contact issue. Johnson in motion. Christian slips. Still finds his way for positive yardage. Koa Misi with the stop. Christian looked like a crazy ballet dancer that time. He was spinning every which way after his footing gave way. He has the game's lone touchdown. And we're still not sure he got in from one yard out in the first quarter. Covered. Everybody's covered. Now Walter Bryant wide open. And he's out of bounds inside the five. Incomplete. Walter Bryant respectfully disagrees. Well, remember this play. This should have been a touchdown. Dalton breaks the uh, pocket. And the Utes drop coverage on Walter Bryant. Ball thrown to the outside. Where this is a walk-in touchdown for TCU. Yep, that right foot came right down on the out-of-bounds marker. But look, Johnson came up when Dalton broke the pocket, and Bryant can't stay in bounds and can't get in the end zone. Instead of first and goal, it's third and nine. They get it off. Dalton, pressure. They're driving down the score. Coach Witt called the blitz, and our, our middle backer, uh, Stevenson Sylvester, he blitzed through the B-gap on my side. I was on the right side, and he chased the quarterback out to me. Again thrown for a loss on third down and out of field goal range, and again, it's number 11, Paul Kruger. I remember seeing my family up in the crowd, and, you know, I'm from Utah, so a lot of those fans and, and people I know are there, and you really want to do something special for the people that you care about and people you're around all the time, so... You know, I wanted us to leave a legacy that year. Third sack of the day for the Utes. And instead of a field goal attempt for the second time at the same end of the field, Andy Dalton takes a sack and they'll have to punt it away. Castillo lets it go over his head. And they'll stop it at the 12. Very good defense. They don't give up much, but Utah have been able to control time, control clock, to run the ball on pretty much everyone that year. They couldn't do it against TCU. The week before uh, Utah, or five days before, actually, Utah struggled to put points on the board at New Mexico. And so the offense was kind of in a, a rut. Flags. The false start on the offense. Dead ball. Full start, offense, number 68. Five-yard penalty, down is still one. TCU's been flagged seven times tonight, but that's the first time Utah has been flagged, and it comes with 8.50 to go in the third. 
And the tough thing about that, Tom, is that you're on your own end. You're backed up. You're trying to get some mo momentum going. You just complete a pass that gets you away from your goal line, and now you back it up five yards. Big penalty as far as momentum's concerned. Pressure on Johnson, and he goes down. Cody Moore found him that time. Cody Moore working alongside of Jerry Hughes. Hughes has 14 sacks on the year. That's six now for Cody Moore, which is a big number for a nose tackle. Check out number 56 here as he comes from the left side and brings down a very elusive quarterback in Brian Johnson. So again, two negative plays in a row for the Utes as they're backing up. We struggled a little bit in the in the uh, third quarter of that football game. It was, it was second to 21, and uh, you know we threw what we called a swamp route. We ran a little corner post with uh, Brent Castile. Brian Johnson goes deep over the middle. Good hands. First down, Utah. Underthrew it just a little bit. If I'd have had it a little higher, probably would have scored a touchdown, about a 65 or 70 yard touchdown. And uh, you know we ended up converting the first down, but he had to make a diving catch. We had the guy beat, double moved him, just how we drew it up, and uh, just didn't execute the throw properly. Um, but that was that was one of the moments that kind of stuck out for me in that game as a, as a frustrating moment of not. Castile back in action this season, missed most of last year with a knee injury. He said it was good for me. I used that time off to study film on everybody, including myself. And now here is Asiata. And Asiata takes it on the direct snap before Stephen Coleman brings him down. And he laid it to Stephen Coleman pretty good that time. I think Coleman might have thought that was Brian Johnson with the ball in his hand. No, that was a running back, 230-pound Matt Asiata, lowering his shoulder and driving Stephen Coleman back. Check out this contact. Similar numbers, but there's a big difference when it's number three coming at you instead of number four. <laughs> you think? I know Coleman thinks so now. The option. Eating four for the first down. Good speed again by TCU. They've really disrupted the game plan in that regard, Dan, using that speed to track down guys on the edge. At some point, do you shell the option, or does it still serve a purpose? Well, if they're able to, if they're able to string it out as the TCU did that time, it's going to be very difficult for Utah to get yardage wide. So maybe a misdirection option where you don't have three guys that you're trying to outrun to the corner. Johnson's got the hot hand, seven of his last eight for 73 yards, but... Remember that quarterback draw, third and short. Corbin Lax. Pardon me, that's Asiata. Now he wants to throw the ball. And incomplete. Going over the top. Gary Patterson said we would dare them to throw the football. Uh, we knew going into it, it would be a, a very tough matchup offensively. And, uh, you know, we just didn't convert a couple of third downs. We had some opportunities on some third and shorts that we didn't convert that really kind of made a stall those offensive drive. So Louis Sakota on. Right away, fourth and short. Sakota three for three throwing the ball in his career on fake punts. Boots it away. Curley asks for the fair catch, takes it at the 14-yard line. Although he's always been one of the younger guys, whatever he does, he came here on his recruiting trip and he was 16 years old. He's always been a leader, he's been a student of the game, and he's a calm, cool guy. He had a chance to learn from Alex Smith, one of the best that's ever been at Utah, one of the best college players ever. And he had a chance also to work with Urban Meyer for a year and get a sense of his feel for offense and watching film and preparation. So Brian really had a great launching point his first year. Asiata in the backfield, Johnson fires on first down. There's big number 88 again, Freddie Brown, and he gets a couple of extra yards for another Utah first down. He was a clutch player. He's able to, uh, to elevate his game. Uh, he also made everybody else around him better, and that to me is the mark of a true leader and uh, a true great player. Quick delivery by Johnson. How about this catch? Fourth of the night for 48 yards, big first down for the Utes. And how about Freddie Brown as a go-to guy 
for Brian Johnson. Johnson will keep this. Pardon me, that's Asiata in on the direct snap, and he may be found a yard. The interesting thing they do with Matt Asiata, when he comes in, essentially at the quarterback spot, they also have Braden Godfrey with a wristband in. You see Asiata doesn't have a wristband with the plays on it. They said, we use Godfrey. The wide receiver has his own wristband. He actually acts as the quarterback in the huddle and calls the play, and then Asiata lines up behind center. Yeah, you don't want your running back having a wristband on his wrist. Those linebackers are smart, might rip it off and try to read it. Tough to read when you can't focus, huh? <laughs> Take a couple of shots. Comes Foggy. Johnson steps up, fires another strike there off of Brown. And Brown has another first down. Jason Phillips takes him out of the 48 and a half. Well, that's where your money is right now for the Utes and Brian Johnson. Freddie Brown's having his way on the outside there, either a slant route or the comeback route, and then the ability after the catch to break tackles and get some hidden yardage out of the play. Great route. Turned a very good corner, and Nick Sanders around. Brian Johnson thought this Utah offense could pull off some chunk plays tonight. Coming into the action, haven't seen too many of them. Johnson took a shot. Godfrey had to grab Henson and brought him down. You know, one guy we haven't called his name is uh, Jerry Hughes, the yep. defensive end out here. He's going to get close this time, working against Dustin Hensel. Hensel with long arms gets off balance here, but Johnson, he knows where number 98 is. He knows he's got to get rid of that ball fast, or this guy's going to get him. No sack so far tonight for Jerry Hughes. He made an immediate impact in the BYU win. Sacked Max Hall. Four times, forced a couple of fumbles. Johnson incomplete. Max Hall said this week down the road in Pro Bowl, here's a flag coming in, that he would be rather be watching Dwight Schrute tonight than watching the Utes. So I think now that the office is over, he's probably tuned in. Yeah, I put uh, the office on my TiVo, but that's Robert Henson. <laughs> he's not going to watch this one in replay. That's an appearance. Defense, number 51. Spot of the foul, automatic first down. Henson plays this game with a certain amount of rage. He said the three hours he has to play college football are his release from a troubled childhood. One of which an early morning fire when he was 10 years old cost the life of his brother. Then his sister. By the way, he brought his mother and his sister out of the burning household. Then his redshirt freshman year, his sister Tiffany was assaulted, shot nine times, left for dead. He said football is his release, and he's learned. After all that, dealing with the grief of losing his brother Nicholas, that he can't control everything. Can't control anything in life, but he can control what happens on the football field. And he brings so much enthusiasm to this TCU defense on that flag, it got the better of him. Well, he's one of the seven seniors that start for Nick Bumpus and his defense. You see, he's checking the call. Second leading tackler, heck of a ball player. Johnson against the blitz gets it away. Braden Godfrey brought down by T.J. Johnson. Really a fine job again by Johnson. You know, talking to Andy Ludwig, he says that Brian Johnson is the smartest quarterback he has ever worked with. And Andy Ludwig has worked with a number of quarterbacks and a number of very good quarterbacks. Smart throw here out to Godfrey sets up a third down and short. A fiery Gary Patterson didn't like the play of T.J. Johnson that time. It brings a third and short now, and it also brings an end to the third quarter. Dakota at the end of the first half, and it's been goose egg since. 2008 looked like it was going to be a special year for the Utes. You had a team that really rebounded well from a tough start to the old, the old seven season, went to bowl game one. Brian Johnson was hurt in 2007 and really hadn't 
come around completely. We, we didn't get to see the complete Brian Johnson at quarterback until 2008. He had Brian Johnson back at 100% the quarterback. He had Matt Asiata back at running back, the defense, and Kyle Whittingham in his fourth year really coming together personnel-wise. They opened the season you know, with Michigan, were able to get on the national stage early with a the victory there. That team really had no weakness. I mean, it was uh, strong from top to bottom, uh, had great leadership and great work ethic. One of the key ingredients that made that team so special um, was we had been together for an extremely long time. We had a, uh, a very veteran senior class that had played a lot and had, who had been through a ton of adversity together. Every team meeting we'd go into, like after the game or even before the game, our, we had a list of goals, and you know our top goal was to go undefeated. It was constantly on our minds every week. Four wide to TCU, Aaron Brown in the backfield. Here he goes, hurdles a man to the 50. Gain of six. Both well, teams led by their quarterbacks. The growth of Andy Dalton credited with TCU's 9-1 start. The leadership of Brian Johnson, the winning its quarterback in Utah history. Dalton getting a lot of help from Aaron Brown, just three yards shy of 100 on the evening on 12 carries. Got a push head to head. Looking for Christian. Incomplete coverage by Sean Smith. Oh, a great break on the ball by Smith. He came close to picking this one off, and if he does, it's six points down the sidelines. As it was, check out the reaction here by number four as he ensures the tackle with the left hand on the back and swats the ball away with his right hand. TCU 7 of 15 on third down. Dalton has run for a couple of them. The blackout here tonight at Rice Echo Stadium. Dalton, quick shot, first down for Young. And Jimmy Young takes it down to the 35. Terrell Cole brought him down. That was a bullet. Great quickness again, getting off the bump. This time it's Bryce McCain who can't stay with Jimmy Young. That quickness to get off the bump and run absolutely kills teams that want to come up and press the wide receiver. And Young has done it a number of times tonight, especially on inside slant routes, and Dalton's been right on target. Bryce McCain may be the fastest youth ever, a 4 2 8 40. Christian up the middle. Big play on first down, picks up eight. Mike Wright, who has returned to action after leaving the field earlier this quarter with the stop. And this is uh, the start of a very methodical drive for TCU. Got good field position after the short Sakota punt. Fine pass that time from Dalton to Young. And now that offensive line giving the quarterback time to throw and opening up some holes for these running backs. TCU opened the UNLV game with a 17-play, eight-minute drive. Neither team has put together long, sustained drives against these good defenses tonight. Christian with the hurdle, a first down, and down to the 17-yard line. Let's check out this hole on the right side. Giles Montgomery and Marcus Cannon. Right here is the canyon that uh, Christian is going to leap through. And he's just an eyelash from going all the way. Montgomery 295, Cannon 350, making a huge hole on the right side. Not quite Edwin Moses, but it'll do. Six play the drive coming up for TCU. The jumping isn't working up front to distract the TCU line anymore. Christian took a pop. Very talented redshirt freshman Mo Neal has returned from two knee surgeries to see some significant time of late for Utah. And Christian looked banged up. Wants to get a breather. He's kind of slight for a, a running back. 5'11", 188 pounds. Got good quickness, good receiver, but uh, he can only take so many shots. You can see how thin the young man is. But he does have our only touchdown of the night so far. Christian's bounced back and forth between wide receiver and running back. Pretty good at both. Aaron Brown inside the penalty box. Only third and one. Not a whole lot of trickery going on now. It's just 
hard nosed smash mouth football from TCU as they're showing their offensive versatility and the power of this offensive line. Two tight ends this time. And Brown with a good move. The line of scrimmage goes over 100 yards rushing on the night. 13 carries for Brown is a season high. His first game of the year against SMU after being suspended for the first three at 11 carries. Two scores in the red zone tonight for TCU. Brown. Donald spun his way to a couple double leaf fourth. Boy, Paul Kruger had a chance to drop him for a loss. It appears that the, the Utes are tired on defense right now. Brown made two miss. Didn't pick up the first down, but this is real makeable field goal range now for Ross Evans. Ross Evans getting ready to kick to get three more points field goal. And we're all literally on the edges of our seats. A 26 yard attempt for Evans. It was a chip shot, 26 yarder. And uh, that, that he could do with his eyes closed. There was no problem. Missed it. Banged it off the upright. I think everybody looked skyward and thought the football gods are with us. When that one uh, bounced off the upright uh, and you look around at the surreal scene at the blackout and that, it was just like, okay, something weird's going to happen here. That north end zone is, is, is probably one of the loudest areas in all of college football. Woo, it was... Well, if you ever heard a crowd cheer, that was just enormous. Would have increased the lead to seven. As it is, Utah gets the ball and a new life with 5.49 to go and down by just four. The, the key thing about it is it kept it a one possession game. So, um, you know, all we needed was a touchdown at the time to go ahead. <laughs> Brian Johnson slept in Alex Smith's basement. He was told to do everything he does. If that includes going undefeated, he'll need to come up big here in the fourth quarter. Johnson over the middle, into double coverage, incomplete. Brian Johnson met with a Hall of Fame quarterback last night, and Dan, you told him if it gets to the fourth quarter, it's your game. Yeah, and he he welcomes that challenge. This is his 30th game as a starter. He's lost only seven times, winning his quarterback in the history of this program, and that's why everybody's so confident that he can get it done. 80 yards is a big task. He's got a lot of time to do it. He's got two timeouts. I wouldn't bet against him. To throw again on second down. Ball found its way loose, incomplete. Raphael Priest with the coverage. Well, I'd throw against another corner. I'd find somebody else to throw against. Priest has knocked down about five passes tonight. A couple of long balls, and that one a very difficult slant route for a corner to defend. Did a super job. Johnson's bit gotten cold, though, in this chilly evening, Tom. He's missed his last six passes. Guys up front get the credit for TCU. The guys in the back making it work tonight. Priest and Sanders specifically. And Aziad is the running back. Off the right shoulder of Brian Johnson. Third and ten. Plenty of time. Coverage by Sanders. So Sakota back out there. Had an 81-yard punt earlier this season. Jeremy Curley. Not likely to return this one. He'll just want a fair catch. That one, a horrible punt from Sakota. Off the side of his foot, TCU will have fantastic field position. Aaron Brown. Paul Kruger with the stop. Now this will be a, a very slow moving offense now for TCU. They're going to take that play clock down inside of 10 seconds, close to five seconds with each snap now. 
because the clock is their enemy. They've got great field position. If they don't gain another yard, they can still pin back Utah deep in their own end of the field. TCU is off next week. They're five minutes and four quarters away from possibly playing in a BCS Bowl. Dalton over the middle. Jimmy Young has it for a first down for TCU. Christian inside the 20, 9-4-2 with the stop. Yeah, it looked like Utah knew this play was coming, too. They started to cheat to the left side. Watch the defense coming this way and the fine cutback and patience by Christian. He sees the hole but makes another cut and picks up good five, almost six yards on a play that looked like there was nothing there initially. Giles Montgomery, the right guard, making his 24th straight start at that position tonight for TCU. Christian. Bottled up, brought down, no gain. Ross Evans missed his last field goal attempt, may have an opportunity for another here as the clock runs under 3.30 to go in the fourth quarter. And now it's going to be decision time for Kyle Whittingham as to when he uses his uh, two timeouts that he has remaining. A field goal, of course, would make it still a one possession game what the Utes were able to force last time TCU was here. Third and five. Watch is in the backfield with Brown. Dalton waves Bryant. Dalton has time to the end zone. Overthrew Walter Bryant. So another field goal try here now for Ross Evans. I thought the game was probably over. I mean, Evans missed one uh, a series ago or whatever, and he thought, okay, this is the one he's going to make. He'll, he'll make up for it. He's got now a 35-37 yard field goal. He's going to make it, and now it's going to be 13 to six, which means the mess we can do is tie. I remember on those field goals that we had installed a uh, specific, you know, blitz to kind of get him off his, you know, his comfort level. I think sometimes as a young kicker, you let your, your mind play games with you a little bit. And I think with Ross Evans, even though he made a field goal early in the game, that one he missed off the left upright in the fourth quarter affected his second kick. To make it a seven-point game. Missed it right. When he missed it, I just thought, my gosh, in fact, my call was he missed again. It was one of the great moments in Utah college football history to see a kicker who was that good as Ross Evans miss a chip shot and keep Utah in the ball game with a possibility to win it and a possibility to achieve what they wanted that year was a BCS Bowl. That's why it's tough. I know that Evans has had a great year, but remember, he's an 18-year-old freshman kicking in a huge game. It appears after he kicked the ball, he knew it was right. His head stayed down, hoping it would draw to the middle of the uprights. Not so. Basically, all we've built this whole season is coming down to this last drive. When our offense took the field with two minutes and 48 seconds left, the, the feeling was extreme confidence. One of Brian Johnson's strength was the two-minute offense. And this is a chance for him to call the plays. No team in the country at that point practiced two minutes more than us, so uh, we, we felt completely in our comfort zone. Is a missed field goal enough to give momentum to an offense and confidence? Well, they have no choice, you know. I mean, I'm sure they're confident in their plan. Right now, they've just got to hang on to the ball. That's the first completion for Johnson in a long time. And this second completion now, the second straight goes for a first down. That's the key. First down, stop the clock. He got out of bounds anyway, but now they're out to the 31-yard line. Remember, they're down by four. They need a touchdown. Utah has pulled out a handful of close games already this season. A 25-23 win at the Big House to open the year. Johnson. Over the middle, great hands. First down and more for Utah. 
Utah. And into TCU territory goes Brent Castillo. That play was extremely critical in the game. Utah had finally found a way to break through TCU's defense. They found a, a seam that they could get through, and it gave them confidence for the rest of the drive. Both Freddie Brown and Brent Castillo were seniors, and they had played a lot of football for us. We had a, a ton of chemistry. I threw it a little high because I had to kind of get it over uh, over a defensive lineman, so he was able to jump up, make a play on it, and uh, run for a little bit after the catch and uh, get us past midfield. Johnson flushed. Corpse one deep. Knocked away. Flag on the play. Nick Sanders has had a tremendous game for TCU. This time he gets caught with his hand in the cookie jar. The corner was beat, so he turned his back. So I kind of threw a flat, kind of a back shoulder throw to where our receiver would have to stop and kind of create the contact. There were a lot of calls like that that could have gone either way, let it go or, or call it. And it came at a critical time for Utah, obviously. And I think it just added to the charm and the, the magic that was going on in the stadium that night. Johnson, pressure, got away. Incomplete. Got away from Cody Moore. Cody Moore could not believe that he didn't bring Johnson down for another sack tonight. Brian Johnson was basically unrecruited out of Robert E. Lee High School in Baytown, Texas. Didn't play until his senior year. Now he's the winningest quarterback in Utah history. Can this be his signature win? He's got 22 victories under his belt. Boy, if number 23 comes here tonight, he'd cement his legacy, wouldn't he? No question about that. I like that play too. Pick up positive yards, get that good feeling going for the offense in that offensive line. Third and five, deep to the end zone, incomplete. Oh, would you want to have that one back, Brian Johnson? Before the fourth and five play, you know, we had a third down. We tried to throw a corner to Brinker Steele, and I overthrew it in the end zone. We had the guy beat, and uh, I was a little disappointed in myself, but I knew we still had one more down. When it was fourth and five, here's a here's a shot that they they might not. They could try for a field goal and make it nine to ten, or they could they could go for it fourth and five. Playing TCU previous four years, anytime it was a pressure situation when the game was on the line, we had a pretty good feeling that uh, that Coach Patterson would call a cover zero blitz. We knew he was going to bring the pressure, so I slid the line, angle dropped, and the defender was right in my face. He came with both his hands up. Over the middle, first down. Freddie Brown. And the defensive end was bearing down on Brian, and I thought, oh no, he's going to get sacked. But somehow we managed it to, uh, to throw around the uh, outstretched arms of the defensive end and, and put it right on the money. And, and like you know, to this day, I, I still don't know how we made that throw. Into coverage, complete. Timeout available. Again, it's Godfrey. I don't think you worry about using the clock yet. You got a minute to go in the ball game. You don't, certainly don't want to give TCU any time on the clock if they get the ball back after you score. Johnson trying to engineer a go-ahead drive here in the fourth. Pre-snap, I knew we had uh, exactly what we wanted coverage-wise. And, uh, you know, as soon as, it, as soon as the ball left my hand, it felt good. I knew. On the slam. Touchdown, Utah. I remember just kind of doing a little fist pump and, and turning back to the sideline, looking at my teammates, and, and we were extremely excited. Everybody's going crazy. Everybody's rushing the field. This is a well-built stadium. This press box is shaking right now. The wave of sound came up on top of us, and you could feel it physically up in the booth, this explosion of euphoria from the fans. The uh, electricity in the stadium as everybody in black, in mass, it looked like a, a mass of moss just creeping up out of the seats as everybody stood up and the tremendous deafening roar as Utah took their first lead in the ball game. It's a three-point game with 47 seconds left on the clock. Good pass protection again, good quick delivery, slant route. Nine catches for Freddie Brown tonight, 105 yards, and perhaps the biggest touchdown reception in the history of this football program. Now the headline said biggest game ever. Biggest catch ever, biggest throw ever. But what will the headline say tomorrow? 
biggest win ever. from the fans was this sense of euphoria that wow we're in front but then there's like 45 some seconds left you just wonder can they hang on here the game wasn't over I knew it wasn't over because all they had to have was a field goal to uh, put it in overtime and so once we scored we still had some work to do there's John Richard tripped him up but the big misses today for TCU have come from special teams the first attempt point off the left upright Trying to compensate, perhaps, Ross Evans, a freshman kicker, puts the second one right. Utah answered with the go-ahead drive. Now Dalton to the sidelines. Quick shot and out of bounds goes Young. 36 seconds remaining on that first down grab. Move the chains, get the uh, word from the sidelines. But if I'm Utah, I'm double covering Jimmy Young. He's the difference maker for this passing attack of Andy Dalton. TCU has only played in one close game this season. That was October 11th in the offensive struggles in Colorado State. Dalton in trouble. Complete. Antoine Hicks with his first grab of the night, and he picked a perfect time to show up for TCU. The true freshman making a catch just his fifth all season. But what about the job of extending the play by Dalton? Makes two guys jump up in the air and finds the freshman down the sidelines. Now you gotta start thinking about range for Ross Evans. He's got a long this season of 50 yards. So to get to that point, they gotta move this ball about 17, 18 yards. And Ross Evans needs to clear his head after two misses. Ball tipped at the line of scrimmage by Koa Misi. 22 seconds remain. Now, if they do get Evans in range, check out the uh, tip play by Koa Misi, 41, working there at the line of scrimmage. Good play working as Marcus Cannon. Couldn't get to the quarterback, but frustrates the quarterback by knocking that ball down. But the point I want to make about a long field goal is it's easier than kicking a short field goal because it's so far you're not thinking about accuracy, you're thinking about distance. See if Evans gets that chance. Bobbled, incomplete. Smith had the coverage on Young. Drop pass by Jimmy Young. Smith had nothing to do with that breakup. That was just a drop. That's all you can say about that. And that's a huge drop. Eight of 18 coming up now. Third down conversions for Dalton. Coming into the game, TCU sixth best in the nation at third down. Their young quarterback, a big reason why. And the red shirt sophomore, Andy Dalton, will work out of the shotgun. Batted away again, almost picked. Stevenson Sylvester had a chance to seal the game. Derek Shelby with the deflection there. And won't that, that could come back to haunt Utah as TCU will have one more play to pick up a first down. Remember, they got two timeouts. They can throw the ball to any point on the field. College football fans know that they saw a similar play in Texas versus Texas Tech. The Red Raiders came back to win that one. 11 seconds to go.
down the sideline. This one is picked up. Utah will go to 10 and 0. TCU in that on that final drive had a decent possession. They drove down the field, and I remember Utah made some nice plays. There were like three pass breakups. And one of the great defenders, we talk about Sean Smith, who was drafted. Robert Johnson was also drafted. And when Robert comes up with the interception, it stops TCU's drive. Robert Johnson with his first interception of the season. by a guy who's been making a lot of good decisions trying to get the ball deep when he really didn't have to just wanting to get his field goal kicker in range to tie this one up and Robert Johnson with his first interception of the year the pursuit of perfection continues for the Utes and Brian Johnson just gave somebody a souvenir I get the chills even thinking about it. Everybody was going insane. You know, they rushed the field, tore down the goalposts. I mean, it was it was off the charts. It was the jumping, the joyous, the hugging, the tears. We're all getting ready to maybe storm the field if we could. They try to um, have us not do that, but it's been known to happen. <laughs> it took Utah all night long to get a touchdown, didn't it, Tom? And they finally did on their last drive going 80 yards led by their great senior quarterback, Brian Johnson. Man, what a job. For us to, to beat 10-0 at that point, and uh, now that we had two games left in, in order to finish an undefeated season was something that was very special. To win it in that fashion um, in front of our home crowd was something that uh, I think everybody on that team really cherished, and uh, it's a moment that I don't think anyone will forget. Well, the locker room was complete elation. I mean, everybody was... Uh, was uh, was celebrating and, and it, you can't explain that you have to experience it and be in that locker room and be under those circumstances to really appreciate it. Utah's win over TCU in 2008 is I think without question the greatest home win in Utah football history. Beating TCU to set the scene to go completely undefeated in 2008 not only go to a BCS bowl game but the Sugar Bowl and beat Alabama. I didn't realize how important it, it's been to go undefeated until, you know, I get a little older. I'm starting to appreciate more and more the type of team we had, the type of legacy that, that, uh, that we left and that we built, and um, I feel really honored to be a part of that team.